reading from the second book of Kings. Shennacherib, king of Assyria, sent envoys to Hezekiah with this message. Thus, thus shall you say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let your God, on whom you rely, deceive you by saying that Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. You have heard what the kings of Assyria have done. To all other countries, they doomed them. Will you then be saved? Hezekiah took the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the, of the Lord, and spreading it out before him, he prayed in the Lord's presence. O Lord, God of Israel, enthroned upon the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made the heavens and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he sent to taunt the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands and cast their gods into the fire. They destroyed them because they were not gods, but the work of human hands, wood and stone. Therefore, O Lord, our God, Save us from the power of this man, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in answer to your prayer for help against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have listened. This is the word of the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you, laughs you to scorn, the virgin daughter Zion. Behind you, she wags her head, daughter Jerusalem. For out of Jerusalem shall come a remnant, and from Mount Zion, survivors. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, Thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not reach the city, nor shoot an arrow at it, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast up siege works against it. He shall return by the same way he came, without entering the city, says the Lord. I will shield and save the city for my own sake, and for the sake of my servant David. That night, the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, broke camp and went back home to Nineveh. Verbum Domini. God upholds his city forever. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, fairest of heights, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion, the recesses of the, of the north, is the city of the great king. God is with her castles. Renowned is he as a stronghold. Yeah. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. As your name, O God, so also your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Of justice, your right hand is full.
light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Hallelujah. Dominus Vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Vangeli Secundum Mateum. Gloria Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Verbum Domini Attempting to walk through a narrow gate or a narrow pathway can be really difficult for some of us, especially if you're a little bigger in size like me. You know, you got to suck it in. You know, you, you, to go through, you got to maybe bend and twist. You know, and and be make yourself a little flexible and agile. And today Jesus is telling us that walking through this narrow gate is the path he has chosen for us. And it could look a little frightening, intimidating, because, you know, we have to bend. We have to become flexible and agile, you know, in order to go on this path. But what we must always remember is that Jesus has went through this path before us, and we follow him through. So what does that say? That may, that's saying that he, he's the way, and that he makes walking through this path possible. Well, here in this gospel reading, Jesus says that many who, who, who find this narrow path or attempt to enter are very few. That, you know, there, it's more people will go the way that seems more comfortable. Oh, well, see, it's, it looks a little easier. He says that this road is wide. And there are several, several people taking that. You know, and and coming to follow Jesus, you know, there are a lot of things that we have to put aside, that we have to you know, even give up to live the teachings of the Lord. But ultimately what we know is that this is the best way because this is the way of Jesus. Jesus who, who shows us how to live a moral life. But this moral life is not just so much made up of rules to restrict us and to bring us down or to limit us, 
This is the way of true freedom and true life. This is a way of grace. And remember what Jesus the Lord says. He says, I came to give you life and to give you life abundantly. That is the way of Jesus Christ. And so when we are attempting to enter this way, there comes the trust. Saying, well, believing that that God provides, but that the Lord will give us this true life, which is his own life. This is a grace here again. And, you know, the Lord also mentions right above here. Yeah, there's following the teachings, which are difficult. There's the resisting temptations, which is almost never easy. And then Jesus is speaking to us also about charity here. And this where things can get even harder. He tells us here, do unto others as you would want them to do to you. And, you know, everybody wants to be treated well. We, we, we want kindness. We want people to, we want to be respected and understood. But when it involves charity for others, what do we do? Now, often... You know, here it comes, here it is walking through the narrow gate again. Because it's at this time when we need to, uh, at times when we need to offer charity, is in now is when we need to be again flexible and agile. Because now we're not doing what is so comfortable for us, our own will, but we're doing something for the better and for the good of somebody else. So, again, you know, we. We take up the cross, and we go to help somebody. And, you know, this often means a little sacrifice. But as we go out and do this charity, it's not, we're not doing it just for the sake of saying that I did something good for somebody, but we're doing it in a way as we would do it for Jesus Christ. And this means that while we're doing these different works of of love, that we try to understand somebody, know that we do it really and truly for their benefit and not for our own, and in the way that is best for them. So this means, you know, putting their needs before us, showing, showing interest in what they are interested in, know, and, and serving them the best way possible, just like we would do for Jesus the Lord. And again, this takes some flexibility in our part, takes some agility there spiritually, you know, even sometimes maybe even literally, physically, but for the good of somebody else. And the model for this and for this way of living, for walking through the narrow gate, going through the narrow path, is Jesus. Jesus chooses this narrow gate. Now, and he, he even at, at one point in John chapter 10, he says that I am the gate. He calls himself the gate and because it's there where we enter through. But in entering through there is there where he helps us to walk along the path. And Jesus shows us the extent of this narrow gate when he carries the cross for us. If you ever, you know, go, went to the Holy Land and there is the, the way of the cross, the Via Della Rosa, and in, in walking the path, you know, it, it, at, there's some point, points where it's very narrow. And especially if there's a lot of people around, which probably was when he was... Um, carrying the cross himself on the way to Calvary. You know, it, it, it's narrow, and it's, it can feel like a little, um, you can feel a little constricted there. You know, in, in fact, if, if there's so many people around, you could even, if you, if you suffer from a little uh, claustrophobia, you could feel like you're suffocating. 
because the people pressing in on you. And, and this is the way we follow of Jesus. But we know that as Jesus walked this way, even though he was carrying the heavy cross, he loved so much. You know, his love was, was, was more powerful than ever because it was all love. This was, was him motivating through to walking the cross out of love for each and every one of us. And that's the model we follow when in difficult times, when we have to become more flexible and agile to help somebody else to, so that we can walk this way, we, look, we should look immediately to Jesus the Lord because there, even just by thinking about it, right there, he shows us the way. Now, we can do two things. We can, we can look at it and say, well, I'm just not fit for it. I'm not qualified to walk this narrow path and to be charitable you know, while I'm walking through there. You know, we, we can think of everything that is difficult. And remember, you know, as we get, if we get into this negativity of thought, then you got the accuser who's around. And if he sees us right there, you know, doubting and pouting, then he's going to start to accuse us and tell us how unfit we are. Tell us that we can't do this. Remember, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Jesus calls him the father of lies. See, but here, when, when this time comes, that's when we put our trust in the Lord. And he always makes a way. You know, and though to the world, you know, walking this narrow path, walking the way of Jesus Christ, to them it doesn't make sense. So life could be so much easier. You'd have so much more pleasure if you just live for yourself. If you just indulge. Oh, but the Lord tells us, or the prophet tells us, this is the, that God's ways are not our ways. That his thoughts are not our thoughts, but yet his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And his ways are higher than our ways. See, we know that by living a life in the Lord, that here's this abundant life. Here is where, our, where we become truly human because we could become like Jesus who shows us how to be truly human, how to be truly alive. Because there as we, as we walk this path that Christ has set before us, then we have true peace. You know, we know that when we are in sin, we are limited, that we you know, often feel miserable, we feel guilty, you know, we feel like something's missing there. But when we walk with the Lord, though it may be difficult, and even the most hardest times, and walking in the most narrowest paths, we have peace there because God is with us. Oh, brothers and sisters, then, now we look to Jesus as we walk this narrow path. And yes, in the natural, it may not look like the right way. It may not look like the way that makes sense naturally. But with the grace, the help of Jesus, looking to him, asking for his help, then we go from what is natural to supernatural. And this is how saints are made. Looking to Jesus, trusting him, and letting him guide us. And that's how we go through the narrow path that leads to eternal life, life with God for all eternity. God bless you all.